um, you know, you, you deal with you deal with people from all over different mm -hmm. cultures, mm -hmm. and how how much um, discrimination have you seen on your side as far as how it affects your business? Um, so I'm going to start <clears> with their prejudices against immigrants for, from whatever country. There's some against certain immigrants depending if you're from maybe a European country, mm -hmm. the prejudice might be a little bit less as opposed to if you're, say, Hispanic. Mm -hmm. um, and how it plays into immigration is the marriage between <coughs> maybe the Hispanic woman and the man from Nigeria. Okay. That certainly is where you might see some prejudice plays a role. or Because one of the things that comes into play, if it's a marriage-based petition and the clients are totally opposite cultures, mm -hmm. um, it makes my job as an attorney a little bit more challenging. Um, not saying the service is biased or anything, but of course, if you see a Nigerian man walks in with like a Hispanic woman and they're saying this is a bona fide marriage, which we have to prove, sure. then there will be questions as to whether how bona fide is this. For one, you share we, different languages, um, different cultural experiences. So that, of course, makes it a little bit more challenging. Where I do see at the, say, interview level, maybe for naturalization, a client with multiple, multiple tickets from law enforcement. And you will notice it will be random, like, citation for a seatbelt or well. improper lane change. And it's been given out by the same um, sheriff's department. Not the same sheriff, but the same sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. But it's over maybe a one or two year period. And it's almost like I say to the client, you cannot get a break, can you? Mm -hmm. I have used that to my advantage where I will alert the interviewing officer to say, look at the types of ticket. None of them is like a car accident or none is driving without insurance. It's really, in my mind, maybe a profile. But what you'll see with a lot of the landscapers, their trucks are constantly getting pulled over. Yeah. And it could be they use the improper lane change. Why? Because that officer has a hunch that is a possibility that... Um, <coughs> the occupants of the, the, the automobile may or may not be documented. So that is where I see prejudice play a role. Unfortunately, if you're undocumented, no matter how prejudiced they are, it's not a constitutional argument that we can use because if you're undocumented, <clears throat> um, you're going to get into some kind of trouble. Um, I want to piggyback on something you said earlier too because the family lawyer is in the room with my... Um, divorce clients, mm -hmm. meaning we just got married and they're sitting at the family law attorney's office. They've obtained their green card, conditional, meaning it's only for two years right. because the marriage is less than two years. Right, okay. and now they want to get divorced. And now they want a divorce. And I they get come that see question you. all the time. <laughs> Please call the immigration lawyer first. So what is the <laughs> effect of a divorce on an immigration process? I represent as part of my practice, I would say, about half of my clients are non-English speakers, primarily mm -hmm. Hispanics, mm -hmm. from other countries, and they are either um, green card holders mm -hmm. uh, that have the conditional green yes. card. Their <laughs> their conditions have not been removed. Yes. So I hear that question all the time. I'm I'm so afraid of my immigration status. Yes. Uh, so, so what happened? Absolutely. So for any client who's married less than two years, if they've married a U.S. citizen spouse, <clears throat> I. A marriage to a U.S. citizen spouse is the easiest and quickest way to a green card. It's like green card highway, okay. green card heaven. Okay. Because okay. of All that, right. these marriages are highly regulated. Wow. So the stipulation is, um, under the Immigration and Nationality Act, if you have been married to a U.S. citizen for less than two years, they're going to plop a conditional green card on you. Wow. That means your marriage is on probation. So <clears throat> I tell my clients, go home and play nice for two years. Wow, I see that. That never happens. Yeah. They walk out, they fall out of love. It'll be a month later, they call me, I can't stand him anymore, I can't stand her anymore, I'm moving out, I spoke to my divorce lawyer. The effect is, at the end of that two-year period, they have to go back to the service, they have to go back to immigration and mm -hmm. say, see, I proved to you my marriage was bona fide. We continued to live together. Sure. We continued to share expenses. What happens with that big old divorce in the middle of that two years? It means it affects removing that condition. So I mm -hmm. always have to look to the divorce decree. And I want to see at least some language about fault. I want it to be through no fault of my own. That's a language in the act. Okay. This marriage ended through mo no fault of my own. Okay. Yes, we can remove the conditions. There are waivers available, but that divorce decree comes into play because it can't be this, my, my foreign-born client was cheating mm -hmm. or my sure. foreign-born client met somebody new online 
and moved out of wow. the home. So it does play a huge effect okay. on um That's interesting. On, on on removing those conditions from their So condition. that that is very interesting because in terms of fault, mm -hmm. it brings us to another commonly asked question that I get is